shall we just pray, Lord, take over from this moment on. <coughs> you alone are God. You alone are mighty. Speak to your people. Touch them where you need to touch them. Speak to those hearts, oh God. In the name of Jesus, less of me, less of people, but let it be about you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So the topic that um, I have been commissioned to uh, talk about is accessing the mysteries of God. Accessing the mysteries of God. And um, <clears throat> this comes from one of the um, prophecies of this year. The lady sat down and said, out of the prophecies of this year, what is it that they, they, they want to discuss and uh, talk about today? And one of the prophecies says that there will be even greater infilling of the Spirit of God, insight and revelation of God's hidden mysteries that will impact every sphere of, sphere of influence in the nations of the earth. And so it's from there that we picked up that topic. If you, if you think about um, the topic, accessing the mysteries of God, um, you know, to access, we all know what to access is to get, to obtain, to acquire. Um, that's what accessing is. And the mysteries are basically the secret things of God. That which is not commonly known uh, to people, but you have to actually seek those things. They're deep things of God that are hidden, but you actually have to go out and, 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 and search those. The Bible, um, quickly from Deuteronomy 29, 29, says the secret things of God belongs to the Lord our God. But those things which were revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may know all the words of this law. So going forward, I'll just tell you briefly what I'm going to talk about. Um, so that if, if I don't get to get there, if I get carried away at some point, you know that she intended to say this, she may not have said it. But what I wanted to say is, uh, the first thing that you need to do is to be intentional in seeking things of God. Um, to seek his face, to pray more, to inquire more, to read his word, to pray more, just to seek things of God, to seek him more. Because that's the way that he's going to reveal himself to you. The second thing that I'm going to talk about is how God wants to reveal himself to us. Um, he, he just wants to do it. He's actually waiting to reveal himself to you. He's actually waiting every morning when you, when, when you wake up. God is actually w w waiting to just reveal a, a little bit more about himself to you. And the third thing that I'm going to talk about is, as he speaks to you, be able to hear his voice, be able to obey and be able to believe him, and to walk and submit to the Holy Spirit. And another aspect that I'm going to talk about is how you need to surrender to the sovereignty of God. You know, there are some things that may not you wanted to be revealed, but you may not actually get to, to get that revelation. But you ought to submit to the sovereign, because God is sovereign. He does what he wants. He reveals what he wants to reveal. He talks to who he wants to talk to. Um, so that's another aspect um, of that I'm going to talk, manage, to, you know, God helping us manage to talk about. And the last bit is if you miss it, if you miss uh, if you miss God, if you miss when, when God talks to, you, talks to you, be humble enough to come back and say, Lord, I did not understand. I probably said, said things that I did not understand. Help me. And also, um, and there's an aspect of forgiveness that I'm going to talk about as well. So, um, we are going to read from Daniel chapter 2, verses uh, 1 to 49. I'm not going to read all that, but uh, I'll just pick out a few verses. Daniel chapter 2. <clears throat> I'll read actually from verse 20, but I'll explain what the story is all about. <clears throat> Daniel chapter 2. I'll, read, I'll start reading from verse 20. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. 
It gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have an understanding. It reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, O oh God of my fathers. You've given me wisdom and might and have made known to me what we asked of you. Um, you see, in a, just a brief story of what happened here, um, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon had a dream. This, this was the time when the Israelites were out in exile in, in, in Babylon. So he had a dream that disturbed him so much. And he went around and asked uh, all, the, say, all, the, all the wise people and said, if you explain to me the dream, if you tell me what I dreamt, and also the interpretation of it. And people say, said, oh, hang on. You have to tell us um, the dream before we can interpret it. And, and, and then the king said, no, I want whoever tells me that dream, is, and, and they should also interpret it. And um, so he, he actually said he was going to kill all the wise men, all the seers, all those people that were supposed to, 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 to have known his dream, according to him. Um, and uh, at verse 17 and 18, it explains how um, Daniel, who was uh, supposed to be, Daniel and his friends, who were supposed to be some of the people that would have been killed if, if the dream was not revealed. Daniel went and sought permission from the king and said, um, give me time to ask of God. Give me time to inquire from God. And he went with his friends and said, this is, this is the, the situation. And they went and prayed about it. Daniel prayed about it. And um, God re actually revealed the dream to him. And he uh, revealed the interpretation of that, that dream. So that's why in, from verses 20, he's actually thanking God and, and, and just glorifying God. You know, saying that, you know, it, it, it was not man. Man could not have done this. It has to be God. It has to be God Himself. He He, he says it. Um, um, he says in verse nine, verse um, nineteen. Uh, sorry, verse twenty twenty two. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what's in the darkness. It was God that chose to reveal. He actually show, he showed uh, Daniel in a vision. So. From this, we can see that God does reveal himself. He does re reveal deep things. But it's because Daniel had prayed. His friends prayed. And they prayed in unity as well before God and asked, him, and asked God to reveal the, the dream. Um, and I'm, I'm going to move on. Um, the Bible uh, talks about the story of Moses uh, at the burning bush. How... Um, he saw the fire. It, it was on Mount Oreb. It's um, when you have your own during your own time. You can read the story from um, Exodus chapter three, one to seventeen. He saw. He was out in the wilderness. Then he saw a bush burning, and but then it was not getting consumed. But it was only when he stepped aside to to to, to find out more that God started talking to him. It was only when he stepped aside that God started talking to him. So from this, I just want to challenge you today that do you step aside to talk to God? Do you step aside to inquire of God? Do you step aside to, to ask God things? Like Daniel did, he asked God and God revealed himself. Like Moses did, he inquired. He inquired, he wanted to, he was inquisitive. He went and said, oh, why is this, um, this, this bush? burning and uh, not getting consumed. So um, in, the, in the same way today, if there are things that are puzzling you about God or things that you do not understand about God, inquire more. Inquire through, like Daniel did, he, he prayed. And inquire also, you can also inquire through the word of God. Read the word of God and God is going to reveal yourself even through the word. Because the, as we all know, the word of God is, is, is actually his will. He tells you his mind even through the word. The Bible says, no eye has seen, 
no ear has heard and no has entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. Do you love God? Yes. So if you love God, he's prepared lots of things, a lot of things. He wants to reveal yourself, himself to you. And you, you could only do that if you keep inquiring, keep seeking. The Bible t says, seek and you shall find. Ask and it shall be given to you. Knock and the door will be opened. So I'll move on to the next aspect, which is um, uh, what I talked about, how God wants um, to show himself to you, how he wants to show himself out to you. Uh, and I, I'll read that from Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 25. It talks about the prodigal side. It's probably not the, the most um, type of scripture that we'd want to talk about. But there's an aspect of God um, in that story that I wanted to... Uh, just point out uh, to you this this morning. So it's the parable of the lost son. And then he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. So he divided the, to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and jammed to a far country where he wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Um, he joined himself to a citizen of that country, and they sent him into fields to feed with swine. Uh, I move on to verse 17. And when he came to sell, sell, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? So moving forward, he actually went on and went, went home, to his father, uh, verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. And when he was still a great um, way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Uh, I will skip to verse 22. And the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his, on his hand, sandals on his feet, bring a fatted calf, kill it, and let us eat and be merry. Um, I'll, stop, I'll stop there. But what I wanted to say from there is that um, the father saw him from afar. He saw him from very far. He tells us that the father had been looking out for the child. He said, my son, is where is he? He was probably stood by the window or probably by the door or probably out by the door looking out for his son. It's the same picture that we can have this morning of, of our God. He's, a, he's actually looking out for you to just seek him so that he can just hang out with you. How cool is that? He just wants to hang out with you. I don't, my daughter is not looking at me. I'm trying to, to be young like them. Um, so this son has ta had taken his inheritance. He had gone and squandered it all. But the father was still looking out for him. It reminds me of a modern story, uh, which is a little bit um, touching, that a woman was, bought, had bought a phone, in fact it's probably one of his children, that bought that phone for them, for the, for the old woman. And she was out there in the village, and every day <clears throat> she sat by the phone waiting. She, as she goes out in the garden, as she goes out cooking or doing her household chores, she had the phone with, with her waiting for one of her children to call and nobody called it, it was just silent so she went to 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 a, a shop to have it repaired she, she goes um, this phone does not work nobody's nobody's calling on it it doesn't it just doesn't work um the young man that was operating what was in the in this on the service counter was heartbroken for the for the lady because he saw that the phone was perfectly in order. So he went, he went and pressed a number on the, on the phone and spoke to one of the children. He just said, can you just call your mom? Can you just call your mom? Your mom waits for you every, every morning. So when you wake up every morning, do you have this picture every day, just before you do anything, that your dad is waiting for you to just speak to him? He's waiting for you just to say, hi, dad. 
how, what's, what's happening today. Hi, Dad. Can you reveal yourself to me? Hi, Dad. Can you just love on me? That's what God is, 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 wants to do with you, like he did with the son. He didn't care. You, you remember how, how, how it, it happened? He just went and gave him a hug. This guy had been eating with swine. He probably didn't smell good. But the dad just gave him a hug and just lavished love on him. And, uh, and then he started giving him gifts. Um, he, he put out the best robe on him and put a ring, of, or a ring on, his, on his hand and sandals on his feet. And he brought a cut in fat and killed it. That's, that's, that's just a wonderful picture of God. You, usually, I, we always think of this story to think of somebody who is a non-believer, but we Christians, we are doing the same. How much love has God lavished upon our lives? How much did Christ have to suffer on the cross? So just so that you, you and I can just live a life of victory. You and I can just feel that we are loved of God. Uh, but we, we have squandered it. We, we, we just take it lightly. We just take God lightly. We just take that relationship lightly. He wants to go into a deeper relationship with you. He just wants to lavish his love upon you. He just wants to show you how much he cares for you. He just wants to know you that you are not alone. He just wants to show you that you are not forsaken. He just wants to show you that you are a child of the Most High God. He just wants to show you that he cares. You see, all these things that he gave to the child, to, to, to his son, had significance. When he, when he talk about the robe, that talks about righteousness. He just wants to, to tell you that he made you clean, that you can be clean, that the Father can clean you up, that the Father can, he doesn't care what state you are in, he can clean you up. He doesn't care about the state of your heart, he can clean you up. He doesn't care the, how, how much you, you, you can I say smell? The things that are in your life that are so, that will not make it worth before God. Come just as you are. There's a song that we used to sing in, in, the, in the old days. Just as you are, just as I am, without one plea. Thy blood, well, let me find the, find the lyrics. Yes. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou beest me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I come. Yeah, so just as you are, just as you are in your field, in your, in your inability, in your failures, with all your hang-ups, with all your issues, just as you are, God wants you. He wants to reveal himself to you. He just wants to lavish his love upon you. Um, so he gives him a robe of righteousness and he gives him shoes. Shoes, they, they, um, they talk about, um, if, if, if you link that with the Ephesians, I don't want to go that far. Um, but shoes, it, it talks about the gospel of peace. Shoes re, 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 um, re, relates to that. So he just wants to give you a testimony. He wants to give you something that you can go out and tell other people. To say, God did this. I had this issue and God did it. I was lost, but now I'm found. I was in nobody, but God picked me up, cleaned me up and turned me around and make me, made me a child of God. Hallelujah. What a loving God. How, 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 what, how, why, why do we waste our time not seeking him? We ought to seek him. We ought to, to be very, um, very close to the Lord because he's eager to show himself to you. He's eager just to love you. Hallelujah. And um, uh, to going back to, to, to um, the, 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 the rope that he gave him, Zechariah in chapter 3, verses 1 to 6, he saw a vision in which, um, uh, I think it was uh, jo Joshua had um, filthy, filthy clothes and the, the devil was actually um, wanting to accuse him. Uh, then he showed me Joshua 
the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garment and was standing before the angel. And he answered and spoke to those who were before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, I have removed your iniquity from you. I'll clothe, clothe you with rich robes. Hallelujah. That's what God wants to do to us today. He just wants to clean us up, change us around. And he also wants to put a ring on our finger. That ring on the finger, um, it talks about um, God wanting to put a mark on us. He wants to give us a seal of approval. Uh, that's to do with his spirit. But he also wants to give you a position um, in his kingdom. He wants to give you power. He wants to give you honor and dignity. You see, this, this child did not know that he was a, a child of a... You know, he was an heir to the kingdom. He went and squandered things that he was supposed to have been looking after. Um, but when his dad welcomed him back, he put a, a, a ring on his finger. He put him back into a place of authority. He gave him power over Tony to make decisions for his dad, to work with his dad, and to, to go ahead and just govern. And that's what the, the father did with us. He gave us that. He gave us delegated authority to work on him in his, in his vineyard. Luke chapter 10, verse 19, it says, I've given you all authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and all the power of the enemy, and nothing will ever harm you. Hallelujah. What, what, a, what a God. You know, when you talk about authority and power, we sometimes mis, you know, mix those two words, but authority is, 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 is actually um, higher than power. Because authority comes from, 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 from God himself. Power is just to do with strength. Authority talks about a um, delegated authority that God has given us here on earth to help him govern the earth, to help, to help, to help him um, do what we ought to be doing. So that's what the, the prodigal son got when he, when he came back to the father. So that's a picture uh, of us. We need to grow in our authority in the, in, in the Lord. We need to grow up in our authority in the in the Lord, knowing where we ought to stand. Galatians 4, 1 to 2, it says that if a child if, if we are children, if we are not grown up with the things of God, then we cannot understand our position. We will be just as slaves are. Um, because we do not know and and, and, and our lives are um, it actually says, oh, I'll read it as it is. Now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, does not differ at all from a slave. Though he is a master of all, but he is under guardians and stewards until the appointed time by the Father. In other words, you need to grow up as Christians. You need to grow up and take up your position in, in your father's vineyard and, and work, uh, work, work for him and work um, to bring glory to the Lord. The last thing that uh, um, I'm going to talk about is how the Father gave him a feast. He knew that this, this, this lad was hungry. He had been eating with pigs. Um, the, the kid didn't even have, have to ask for a sandwich. The father had already caught a padded calf and, and there was a big feast going on. This just shows that the, our father also is, 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 he wants to fulfill your hunger. You, first of all, he wants to he will supply all your needs. He will supply all that you require. You, he will supply it, but the, uh, the, the Bible in Philippians 4, 19 says, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. So he, you can trust him to be your source. You can trust him to supply all that you need. But the second thing is that if you hunger for God, uh, that's maybe another level. God is, is ready to feed you up. If you hunger for him, he is ready to fill, fill you up. If you hunger for the deep things of God, he is ready to fulfill you. He is he's ready to fulfill that need. The Bible says, as, as a deer pants for the water, so does my soul long for him. Do you actually long for, for the Lord? You need to do that. You need to do that. You need to do that for the Lord. Hallelujah. Maybe at this point, I probably need to talk about um, maybe the other side of 
things when you ask God and for, for, for God to reveal and probably he doesn't reveal the things that you wanted him to reveal. Job had that experience. I like, I like um, that, the story of Job. It talks about surrender. It talks about the sovereignty of God. It talks about that God, he, he, he is in charge. He chooses to, to do what he chooses to do. Uh, Job, from Job chapter 26, verses 1 to 14, if I can manage to get the book of Job, then probably just put it on the on the board. Um, so, um, Job chapter twenty-six. In the story, <laughs> I'll read. I'll, I'll just read one verse. But I'll explain the whole story the way it, it was. Um, sorry, just missed the place. It's verse 14. I'll read verse 14. And indeed, these are the mere edges of his ways. And how small a whisper we hear of him. But the thunder of his power, who can understand? You see, if you think of the story of Job, um, he, he was probably asking God um, what was happening to him. How, how do you explain loss of seven sons and three daughters, loss of 7,000 sheep, loss of 3,000 camels, 500 oxen, 500 donkeys. He had painful bars on his skin and the wife that was telling him just to give up and friends that were telling him that he, all these things had happened to him because of sin in his life. Um, but you know, Job rejected all these things and he put his faith in God. He resolved to trust God in a childlike manner and still live with the mystery of the things that he did, still did not understand of God, but he believed that all things will work together for good for those who love God according to his purpose. In, even in his despair and sufferings, Job's heart was filled, filled with praise. If you, if you, if you, um, I'll, I'll read maybe verse one and two of that. How have you helped him who is without power? How have you saved the arm that has no strength? How have you counseled one who has no wisdom? How have you declared sound advice to many? It goes on and on and on. But in that uh, Job uh, chapter 26 from verses 1 all the way down to 14, what Job is saying is he, God helps the helpless. He counsels the unwise. He, um, all hell is open before him. He stretches out the sky. He hangs the earth on nothing. He wraps the water in clouds. He... Um, hides heavens in clouds. He lays out the horizon between light and darkness. You can separate light and darkness. He shakes the skies when he speaks. His power stirs the seas and his breath makes heaven beautiful. That's what he says in that. Um, in that. But in all this, he says uh, in verse 14, indeed all these things are just the edges. What he's saying there is all these things about God, all, his, all these awesome things that I've said about God are just like a little dot. It's just like a fringe of what I know about God. But what the fringe about what he knew about God was just so exciting to him. You are so excited about him. But you know, you should, you should at the back of, of, of your mind, you should know how much loss had happened in his, in, his, in his life. But he was still excited about God. It's like, oh my God. My, my God is so awesome. My God is so wonderful. I've only seen a little bit about him. But what I've seen about him is so, is so wonderful. I am amazed. And all I can do is just to glorify God. All I can do is just to say, God, you're awesome. That's what he's, he's saying. Just a little bit that he knew about God was still wonderful. Even though he had suffered so much loss, he still gave in to God and said, God, you are sovereign. God, you're wonderful. God, you're amazing. That's what he's saying. The Bible talks about how he says, even though he slays me, I'll still, I'll still worship him. Um, 
I'll bring you to another aspect, uh, maybe bef which is about um, repentance and forgiveness. Like, if you do not understand the things of God, and maybe you've mis misunderstood what God said, probably that's what um, Job did, actually, in um, um, Job chapter 42, verses 1 to 10. <coughs> Sorry, there's so many verses, but I hope uh, I'm not confusing you. I hope you can still understand. Job 42, verses 1 to 10. I'll, um, I'll read from verse 2. I know you can do every, any, everything and, I have, and that no purpose of yours can be held from, with, from you. You ask who is he who hides counsel without knowledge. Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me which I did not know. Listen, please, and let me speak. Um, I'll question you and you shall answer me. Verse 5. I've heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore I abhor my so myself and repent in dust and ashes. So what Job there was saying was, you know, I said things that I did not understand about you. I did not understand at all. I have said things, some things that I shouldn't have said. I had heard some things that maybe people have said. So today I'll bring it back to you that maybe you've heard some things about God or maybe you've experienced things about God and actually said things yourself about God that you do not understand. Just come to that place of saying, like Job did, I repent in dust and ashes. Because um, as, as, as our understanding of God is probably not enough our understanding of God sometimes is probably we don't understand what way is taking things. And Job said, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. I had, I had heard about you, but now I see. In, in, in other words, he's saying, now I understand you. Now I understand you. Now I understand where you're going with this. And um, it was at this point when he said these things, that God says, now, go, uh, now I'm willing to restore you. This is where God is restoration. So it's a point when you come to the Lord and just submit and say, Lord, it's, it's not about me. It's not about what I know. It's not what, about what I don't know. It's not about what I understand. But it's about who you are, how great you are, how amazing you are. It's about just giving a sacrifice of praise, even in places where things are not clear, even in places where things are... Can I call them hazy? Um, if you look at verse 7, um, and so it was after the Lord had spoken these things to Job that the Lord said to Eli Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is aroused against you and you and your friends, for you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Um, now therefore take for yourself seven bulls and seven rams, go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourself a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you, for I will accept him, lest I deal with you according to your follow, um, folly. So these people went and before Job, and um, Job prayed for him, and verse 10 says, And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. What an amazing thing. This is a man that... Um, he, he had suffered a lot, and people said strange things to him. They were trying, of course, they were trying to um, to comfort him. They were trying to help him. Um, and God is saying to his friends, "Go and apologize. Go and apologize." He just tells me today that sometimes we we don't understand what our friends are going through, and like the the old older child in the in the in the other story that I talked. Um, about um, he was so judgmental about the younger kid. He was actually accusing the dad to say how come you're giving him stuff? He goes and squanders. He comes back and you're still giving him a party. I, I've been here and nothing, you never did anything to me. And it's the same thing that God is teaching um, um, Job's friends. He says go and, and say sorry. Go, go, go and say sorry to Job because you have said things about me that you do not understand. You, they actually said um, that that God was unfair, that God was this and that, that um, that Job had sinned. So 
what I want to say to you this morning is you need to forgive each other. We need to forgive each other. You need to forgive your brothers and sisters. You need to pray for your brothers and sisters. And if you look, look at this, it was only when Job had prayed for these people that had said strange things to him. It was only then that God was willing to restore him. He got his restoration only at that point. How much, had, uh, how much have we hurt each other as, as, as children of God? How much do we hurt your, our families? How much do we say crazy things that we do not want anyone else to actually say those things to us? How much do we just judge when somebody is going through a tough time? We, we, we go ahead and just are so judgmental. We go ahead instead of just surrounding them with love, instead of just caring and nurturing them. How much do we fail even to recognize when people are going through tough times? How much do we fail to even be supportive? And even, in, even in, when, when, when we are supportive, how many things do we say that we do not understand? I think it's a, it's a day that God wants us to just lay low and just say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, we repent. We repent. We repent. Please forgive us. Please deal with us. How much do we pray for each other as a church? How much do we go out in unity um, and just surround um, one another? You know, soldiers, they know this. I'm not a soldier, but I know about this, that soldiers go out. If one is wounded, they actually um, can withstand shootings and all that so that they can take out their wounded um, with them. They don't leave man down. That's what soldiers do. And we as Christian soldiers, we ought to do that. We should never leave a man down. We should surround ourselves. We should surround each other. We should bind up each other. We should love each other. We should just surround each other with love. Just care. Just that caring. Let's not finish off our wounded soldiers. Let's not finish each other up. But let's just surround each other. Let's just bind each other up. Let's 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 be intercessors. You see, God made, made Job an intercessor. He, say, he actually said, forget your problems. Just forget your problems for, for, just stop being inward looking for a minute and just look at these other people, intercede for them, pray for them. Otherwise, I'm going to actually um, punish them. So it was only when Job had prayed for the, his brothers, his, his friends, that God actually delivered him. This morning, I don't know what you have been going through in your life, if, what you need God to deliver you from, what you need God to touch you, your life about, but probably you just need to forgive. You just need to forgive someone. You probably just need to wrap your, around, uh, your, your arms around someone and just tell them that I love you. Just tell them that I care for you. Just tell them that you are really, really important to me. That just tell them that I cannot do without you in my life. This is the point at which um, you get our deliverance. This is the point at which um, God will touch you. But maybe like the prodigal son, you've squandered the giftings that God gave. You've done things that you shouldn't have done. You've said things that you shouldn't have said. You've God has give, give, given you giftings and you just sat on them. This is us another day when you just sit down and just say, Lord, please forgive me. Please forgive me for wasting um, my time. Please forgive me for wasting the grace that you put upon my life. Please forgive me for, for those days when you are sat and you are waiting for me to call and I never did. When you are sat, I woke up and you waited for me to actually just speak to you, and I never did. Please forgive me for the filth that I went and put in my life when I should have been a clean person, when I should have lived in authority, when I should have just allowed you to work in me. Please forgive me, Lord. Please forgive me and touch me and change me and help me to, to, to walk in the way that you want me to walk. Um, And maybe you, you've, you've looked at yourself and you thought that you did not have that authority, that you do not have, that you're just like one of the lads, but you're not just one of the people. You are a child of God. God, Jesus, you know, actually 
bled on the cross just for you. Jesus actually laid hanging on the cross and he, he had to go through with a very tough task of salvation, hanging on the cross, loving on you. And um, he said it is finished. When he said it is finished, it means that you, you can do what, what he has called you to do. He has ordained you to go ahead and, and be in authority. He's dedicated that authority to you be, to be able to go ahead and say, um, he says, trample on snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy. And when he says authority, it means his authority. So he's, he's, he's a strong, powerful God. He, he can do all things and he's given that authority for you to be able to stand in a place of authority. And when you say that says the Lord, and then things happen. When you rebuke the, the, the sickness and disease, disease, sickness and disease go. When you say, Lord, touch this person and that person gets touched. But sometimes we look at ourselves and we think we are too small. But you need to stand up and take, grow up as Christians. You need to stand up and grow up and just be in that place of authority. Grow in your authority in the Lord. Um, and, and also, uh, going back to that verse that I was talking about, that I've given you authority and power to trample snakes and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. It talks about all powers, all the powers of the enemy. So it means um, he's given you authority to be able to start to, to stand the, all the powers of the enemy. It, it, it doesn't mean some, it doesn't mean one or two, but it means all means all. Um, all means all, it means everything. So whether it's sickness, whether it's disease, whether it's poverty, whether it's um, um, addictions, you, he's given you authority to, to stand all, the, all those things. And um, it says nothing will ever by any means harm you. When he says nothing, it means nothing. <laughs> it's kind of simple. Nothing will ever harm you. So believe God this morning. Believe God this morning. Get into that place of prayer. Pray and ask God to seek to, to reveal to continue to reveal Himself to you. He, he continues to say, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. And if any man opens the door, I'll come into him. And I'll sup with him or I'll eat with him. That that's a closeness that God wants you and I um, to have with him. That's a closeness that He wants you and I to have with Him. Um, we always think that he's talking to non-believers, but he's talking to us as well. That he is willing to, 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 to sit with you. He's willing to eat with you. He's willing to relate with you or as father to son, father to daughter. He's just willing. He just wants you. He wants you this morning. He wants you this morning as, as, as we sang, just as you are. He wants you this morning with your failures, with your defeats. If, maybe you've been in battle and you've been defeated. You, 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 you've gone through some tough st stuff, but God still wants you where you are. Or maybe you fail to believe him for things. He still wants you. He can, st you, you can still do something with your life. Or maybe you, 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 you wasted them like the, the prodigal son did. You wasted your chances. You wasted the things that, that were God. Or you, 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 you did not please God in one way or another. He still wants you. So our Father wants you this morning. Hallelujah. He's a wonderful God. 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 Hallelujah. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I just want to ask if there's anyone that feels like the prodigal son did. He just came to the father the way he was. He came to the father the way he was. This morning, I just want, while, while all eyes are closed, I just want you to come to the Father this morning and just say, Father, help me. Father, help me. You know me. You know how I've squandered the chances, how I've, I've, I've uh, trampled on the things of God, how I failed to believe you, how I failed to do things right. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. If you are that person, the Lord is willing, the Lord is able. The Lord just wants you to come to him this morning. Like the prodigal son did, he just came to the, to the father just as he was. He came to the father just as he was. This is your chance to make things right with God. This is your chance just to surrender like Job did. He just surrendered everything to the Lord.
You just say, Lord, have your way. Have your way. Have your way in me. Have your way in me. If you if you are that person, you you could just come to the altar. You could just come to the altar this morning. And the Lord is willing. The Lord is willing to touch you. The Lord is willing just to do something in your life. I don't know if there's anyone that feels like that. This is your chance. Get up from wherever you are and just come around. Father, we just want to thank you. We just want to glorify you for your children. Thank you, oh God, my Father, because of the things that are going through in their life. We just want to thank you because you are a loving God who wants to reveal yourself to, to your children. You do not leave anyone out. You do not leave anyone out, Father. You are a loving God. He says, if anyone comes to you, oh God, my Father, you will accept them the way they are. You will accept them, oh God, with their failures, with their unbelief, with their hang-ups, with the things that hold them back. You are able to do that. Lord, today as your children call upon your name, Lord, we just do something in their lives. Do something in their lives. Let them know that, Lord, you are there and how much you love them and how much you care for them and how much, Lord, you never left them in the name of Jesus. Be thou exalted, Abba Father. Be thou honored, O God. For it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray.